Hey everyone, first off, thank you for watching this video. This is going to be the first in a series of tutorials on how to mod Sonic Mania, or actually just play Mania mods on your PC. This first episode is going to focus on installing the mod loader so that you can play the mods, and then how to properly format your first mod folder and mod on any file so that the mod loader can recognize it. So to start, you're going to need to download the Mania mod loader from the Game Banana link in the description down below. Alternatively, Main Memories build server link that's also in the description will automatically build any mod loader commit from GitHub, so there's a second place you can get a working mod loader. Then you're going to take that 7z file you downloaded, open it, select everything, and drag it over to your main Sonic Mania Steam folder. You can get to the Sonic Mania Steam folder by going to where you manually installed the game, or most likely it would have already gone to your default Steam location. You can find the default location in your C drive, program files x86, Steam, Steam apps, common, and then Sonic Mania. When that's done, you can go ahead and open up the mod manager executable that you just put in the folder. And this is important, you need to make sure you hit the install loader button you see there at the bottom. This will make sure that the mod loader can work with the game. Now I'm going to install a working example by using one of my older mods, Doomsday. I'll include a link in the description if you'd like to check that out for yourself. To do this, find the mod where it's posted online, download it, and copy the folder that's inside. You're going to make sure to copy the folder itself and instead of the subfolders like data and uh, the files like mod.any, just the folder itself. So then navigate over to the mods folder in Sonic Mania, paste it in, then you can open up the mod loader again, refresh it, check the mod off, and you can hit save and play. At this point, you're good to go with playing any mod you'd like. So there you can see that the Doomsday's been loaded. I'm gonna skip the cutscene. There's also another way you can install mods as well. Game Banana has support for one-click installs, meaning that the website can open up the mod manager directly and install the mod itself. To do this, open up the third tab in the mod loader. Find the button at the bottom that says Install URL Handler. It will ask you if you can make changes to your computer, and then you can hit yes because it's safe to do so. And once it's installed, any Game Banana page where you see a one-click install will work with the mod loader when you click the button. So for instance, you can see it right there, one-click install. It'll ask to open the mod manager, and then it'll download the mod right away. If the one-click installer works for you, it can be really handy and quicker than downloading the mod manually. So you can see that one's been downloaded. Now if you want to make your own mods, you're going to need to get it recognized by the mod loader. There are two ways you can go about doing that. The first way starts off by opening up the mods folder again and creating a new folder inside. Now, if you're having trouble, I'm going to include a working mod folder in the description with the basic things you'll see in the video. You're gonna open up your new mods folder and create another folder named data inside. That data folder is where the mods files will go like sprites, music, animations, stages, and more. The next episode will teach you how to extract those files from the game. But now you're going to create a file called mod.any in this mod folder. I just do this by creating a text document and renaming the entire thing. Make sure that you have visible file extensions turned on in your PC as well. I'll link a tutorial in the description. When you rename the new file to mod.any, don't worry about the warning, just hit yes. Now in order to get the mod loader recognizing your mod, you're going to need to open up that mod.any file. There are several tags that you can put in this file that will actually get the mod loader to recognize it or change how the mod itself works. I always make sure to start off with the four main tags, which are name, author, description, 
version. They are always followed by an, by an equal sign with no space. Name is the name of the mod. Author is your name and anyone that you've worked with. Description is what pops up down here in the middle of the mod loader. And version is the version number that shows on the side. There are some extra tags as well. These are DLL file, redirect save file, speech use tempo change, blue spheres tempo change, and codes. DLL file is for more advanced mods that add custom code modifications. This is different than the other tags because you can actually have multiple files included here, all separated by commas with no space. So if you have these, you can say test mod one dot dll comma test mod two dot dll. Redirect save file is a boolean that will make a separate save file in the mod folder that the game will use instead. So if you have that, you can set this to true. Speech use tempo change is another boolean that will change the stage's music tempo to be sped up rather than using the mania speech use music. So if you want that, you can set this to true as well. Blue Spheres Tempo Change is another boolean that, that adjusts the original Blue Spheres music file to be sped up if I'm understanding its usage correctly. So if you want that, you can set it to true. Finally, codes is for more advanced mods that incorporate code list files in your mods folder. So codes.lst. There are other tags for GitHub and Game and Analinks, so you can update mods directly through the loader too. For game and analinks, you'll need to have a page for your mod already posted to that site. Then you can look at the link and put in the item type by saying game banana item type. You can see up there in this link that it's in the map section. And then the item ID is used by saying game banana item ID. And at the top, you can see that says 201041. Just as an example. And there are other tags for GitHub mods, but I'm not exactly sure how to fill them in using this first way of making a mod.any file, but the second way will have you covered if, if you're interested in doing that. As well as tags, there are also groups that you can put in here. They are music loops, ignore files, and replace files. The final two are untested as of right now, but they're in the loader. When putting them in, you're going to put them in on a new line with brackets around the names. Music Loops is for setting up samples to loop back to with music files in your mod. Music modding will be covered in another episode, but there are essentially two ways to change sample loops, and this is one of them. So if you wanted to change the first Green Hills file, you can say Green Hill 1 equals 1, and it would loop back to the first sample after the song ends. Ignore files will allow you to list files to make the mod loader think that the file does not exist. It will make the game not even attempt to load that file at all. So as an example, if you wanted to skip over some of the Sonic sprites, you can put in the following path. I wouldn't recommend that, but that's if you need it. Replace files will change the path for files that the game looks for and replaces it with another path. You put the name of the file being looked for followed by an equal sign and then the file you want to replace it with. Just like ignore files, Multiple files need multiple lines as well. So just as an example, you can put the Sonic file and replace it with the Supersonic file. And those are what the mod loader looks for. You can have as many tags or groups as needed, but I always make sure to stick with name, author, description, and version, and that's all that will be in the sample that you can download. However, I did say that there are two ways, and the second way is much simpler. The second way to make a mod recognized by the mod loader is by going back to the mod loader's program and hitting the new button you see in the middle. You can see that there are spots for the mod's name, your name, the version of the mod, and a description. At the bottom you can see that there's also checkboxes for the blue spheres tempo change and speech use tempo change that I talked about earlier. So I'm going to fill this in again. Test mod 2, your name, 1.0, and test mod 2. The updates tab also lets you put in your GitHub repo for updates or your own self-hosted link. So you can fill those in if you do have those. 
And when that's finished, you can hit OK at the bottom and your mod folder will be created along with your mod.ini. Now that your first mod folder is done, you can hit refresh in the mod loader and see that your mod is recognized if you chose the first way and it will already be there if you use the second. You can check that off in the loader and boot up the game when you made changes. I really hope that this tutorial was helpful for you and that this new series will be able to help anyone get into Mania modding. The next tutorial will be about extracting the data.rsdk file so that you can look inside the files and edit them as you need. There's a link to the Retro Engine modding server in the description if you have any further issues or if you want to join the largest community of other Mania modders. If you did like the video, please drop a like, and if you want to see more in the future, please make sure to subscribe. If you have any questions, I can try my best to answer them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.